hi this is sachi now i'm going to tell you about the kernel the kernel is the central component of the most computer operating systems it's kind of a bridge between application and the hardware of the computers like cpu memory devices or we can say that it includes managing the system resources in this diagram you can see that the kernel is the central component of the operating system or it's kind of a nucleus of the operating system the outer part of the kernel is shell and the most outer outer part of the uh, operating system is application so here are some functions of the kernel the first one is managing system resources the kernel manages the system resources very well the second one is low level scheduling of the process the low level scheduling determines which tasks will be addressed and in what order the next one is inter process communication the ipc is the part of the kernel which deals mainly with the techniques and the mechanism that facilitate communication between processes the next one is process synchronization so the kernel put the process in the sync order very well the next one is context switching the context switching allows for one cpu to handle numerous processes or threads without the need for additional processor so guys that's all about the kernel now ranjita will tell you about the monolithic kernels hello guys uh, so our topic is monolithic kernel versus micro kernel and i am going to talk about monolithic kernel and i'm going to tell you this in a layman way think think this pink box is address space <clears throat> Address space is basically a memory where something is stored or accessed. Now, I'm taking two services: kernel services and user services. Kernel services and user services. I'm going to outline them as kernel services having supervisory mode, like all the privileged services such as basic IPC operations, halting CPU, new memory allocation, executing system calls, etc. And user services are like IPC between applications, operations related to file servers, device drivers, etc. Now talking about monolithic kernel, what it does is that it puts the kernel services and user services in single address space. So this is basically monolithic kernel is all about. Taking this to next level, let us talk about advantages. So the first, it takes less code to write a monolithic kernel. Second, it have relatively fewer bugs since only way to conduct between services is using execution flow. Third, they are also relatively fast since user services and kernel services are in same address space. Let us now talk about disadvantage of monolithic kernel. So first is in large kernels, address space will be bulky as there will be many services in one address space. So managing them is a little bit difficult task. But the main disadvantage of monolithic kernel is if there is a bug in device driver or user services then whole system will crash. You may wonder how. Let us take an example. driver then it will affect the kernel service and that will definitely affect the whole system and ultimately the whole system will crash down so this is the main disadvantage of monolithic kernel that's all about monolithic kernel now akanksha will talk about micro kernel hi guys i'm back 
as we can see that in monolithic kernel, the kernel services and the user services have common address space. But in micro kernel, the kernel services and user services have separate address space. The space containing kernel services is known as kernel space and the space containing user services is known as user space. Now I want to tell you about the advantages of micro kernel. The first one is protection and isolation between system components. I will explain it later through example. The second example is it is small in size because kernel service and user services have separate address space so we need to write code separately. That's why it is a small in size. Let us see with the example. This is user space and this is kernel space. If user space catches any bug, it will not affect the kernel space. And one service fails, the other one still works. As we can see that in this dominoes, in user space, if one domino falls down, it will not affect the kernel space dominoes. Now the disadvantages of microkernel. The first disadvantage is it is slow in execution. We need to write code in both the user space and the kernel space. That's why it is slow in execution. And the second disadvantage is the code is complicated. The services are specific for kernel and the services are specific for user. That's why its code is complicated. Now the suction will sum up the whole thing. Hey guys, I'm back. So in this slide, you can see that there is a standard diagram of monolithic kernel and micro kernel. In monolithic kernel, there is only one address space, but in micro kernel, the address space are divided into two parts. The first one is user space and the second one is kernel space. The user space has its own services like application IPC, Unix server, device driver, file servers and many more. And kernel space has its own services like basic IPC, virtual memory, scheduling, etc. So at the last, I want to sum up the whole things about this video. So in monolithic kernel, there is a fast execution and the micro kernel has slow execution. The monolithic kernel has less code and micro kernel has more code. The monolithic kernel are bulky in size, the micro kernel are small in size. If the monolithic kernel catches any bug, the whole system will crash. But in micro kernel, uh, if the bug catches, the system may or may not be crashed. The examples of monolithic kernel are Unix, Linux, etc. And the examples are of micro kernel are Mac, Windows, etc. So that's all about this video. So that's it guys.